Good evening. I'm Caroline Nance. The High Line, an elevated railway turned park, has grown from a New York favorite to an international sensation. We begin tonight with the story of two young innovators attempting to bring similar success to a surprising new location. Connor Hansen has the story. The Essex Street subway is home to a relic of New York's past, a trolley terminal about the size of a football field, unused since 1948. Within this abandoned space, Dan Barash sees the future. So all this dark, barren space is going to turn into a lush green park. That's exactly the plan. So this is roughly an acre of forgotten space within New York City. And our goal is to dramatically transform it using this new form of solar technology that really will have lots of plants and trees growing in the space. His idea, the low line, the world's first underground park, an easily accessible getaway in one of New York's busiest neighborhoods. It's connected to an existing subway station. Uh, it certainly isn't open to the sky. All of the elements that one thinks of when they think of a park aren't down there, right? So it's a different kind of a thing. We, we, we use the term park to help describe the feeling that you might have by being able to enjoy natural sunlight throughout the year. Working alongside Barash is former NASA engineer James Ramsey. He hopes the low line will showcase some revolutionary technology. So we're literally taking sunlight, condensing it, sending it underground, and respreading it back out. The low line will be lit by parabolic collectors, devices that harness sunlight above ground and redirect it below, creating the sensation of natural light 60 feet underground. But it's not just about the science. Carrie Colhane works at the Two Bridges Neighborhood Council, a local advocacy group on the Lower East Side. She thinks the funding would be better spent on the neighborhood's existing parks. We have no shortage of parks. We have a shortage of park funding. While Colhane sees the potential of the project, she fears that without meaningful community outreach, the low line will rapidly increase gentrification. Even if their intention isn't to you know, create this high dollar real estate. The reality is that what will happen if there is a major tourist attraction in the center of the neighborhood is that doesn't serve the majority of the people who live here. In this kind of a community, there are def there's definitely apprehension around any development project and anything that will transform the neighborhood and potentially make things a little bit more expensive. Gentrification issues are very real for people. As cities around the world, including Detroit, Washington, D.C., and Tokyo, express interest in repurposing abandoned urban spaces, Colhane hopes these projects will start and end with the community. Small businesses along Clinton Street are already being pushed out for luxury condos, for higher commercial rentals, something like the low line, which is going to attract a huge number of people who really aren't a neighborhood constituency, um, is going to accelerate that pressure. I think that the community needs to be a, the vital stakeholder in the design as well as in the operational model so that there's a, a structured way for the community to have input into the uses of the space. A big part of our inspiration really is um, hopefully uh, delivering something that the local community will use and will be popular within the neighborhood itself. Connor Hansen reporting. I'm Caroline Hansen, New York. Thanks for joining us and good night.